My name is Emily Mitter. I'm a sophomore at Campbell University and I'm on the volleyball team. What's your major and what are your career goals beyond Campbell? Um, so I'm biology pre-vet with an environmental science minor. And after Campbell, I just want to get into vet school. I started volunteering at a dog rescue when I was 11 years old. And then I also always brought home foster dogs and I always had dogs and animals around me. So then when I got to college, I just kind of felt like something was missing. So I started to look up um, places in the area that had opportunities for me to go out and help animals. And it was like the second Google result that came up. And I was so excited that there was a horse rescue because when I was younger, I had some opportunities to be around them, but not a whole lot because it's not as common in Southern California. So I was like, I absolutely have to try that out. Like, I want to see what it's all about. What's the name of the rescue and walk us through the, the process of a horse coming to the rescue? So the rescue name is Leilani May Horse Rescue. It's in Linden, North Carolina, and it's actually run by an army veteran. Her name's Miss Deb. Um, and she's absolutely amazing. She gives everything she has to these horses. Um, we have about 40 of them right now. And, um, so the few different ways that we get horses, um, the first way and kind of the most depressing way is um, out of kill pens. So this is kind of their last stop on their way to slaughter. And then the second way is um, like owner surrenders. So a lot of people, when they get horses, they're not fully aware of how much time and money it can actually take to maintain them. So that actually gets pretty dangerous because if people are really desperate to get rid of their horse, that's when they end up in kill pens and end up going to slaughter. And then the third way is um, if there's like a concerned neighbor or someone thinking that there's a horse that's possibly being abused or neglected, then we kind of help them like go through that process. And then once we get the call from animal control that they seize the horse, then we take them from there. If we need to, we isolate them in a stall by themselves. So one of our newest rescue, Penny, she, oh my gosh, there's like a body scale and she was just starved like beyond belief. So she's in a stall by herself right now just because she'd get beat up if we let her out. But for the most part, when we intake them, they're either isolated or we just kind of let them go be a horse with the rest of the herd. And then my favorite thing when they come out of kill pens is to groom them because they're so dirty and matted. and. It's just a really easy way to show them that they're safe and they're gonna be taken care of. A lot of them are super confused when we start like brushing them and hugging them. They're like, what is this? Because they come in in such different types of shape and types of conditions, yeah. is there a rehab program of sorts for, for getting them to, to proper shape? Yeah, it depends. So like um, Penny, the horse I was just talking about, she has never gotten her teeth done. So her rehab is to just help her gain weight enough so that she can go get that done. Um, so for her, we have to feed her five times a day with like completely soaked food because she can't actually chew and it would be really painful. So like that's her type of rehab. But if we have another horse that comes in with like, um, maybe some joint issues or something like that, then they are mostly just, we need to make sure they get like certain medications. So it just kind of looks different depending on the stage the horse comes to us in. So I have like daily tasks, which is um, like making sure their stalls are mucked or they all have hay, clean the water. And then there's kind of like the healthcare side of it. So that would be feeding and all 40 of them have different feed orders and you have to make sure you get it right. Um, administering like medication. And then the third one is like the administration side. So I'm in charge of the Instagram and me and the other head volunteer. We take care of the Facebook, the website, the email, fundraising, all of that. What would you say are some of your favorite parts of the whole volunteering? <laughs> um, definitely seeing these horses who just have been through the absolute worst and watching them find personalities again and watching them be able to be horses, which a lot of them haven't been able to. Um, so one of our horses, Spirit, he's kind of new. He came from a kill pen, but he had road shoes on for months past what they should have been on. And when we took him off, he just sprinted around the property for about 10 minutes. Like he was just so happy. And then all the volunteers there are so amazing. How has this volunteering with the horses and working so closely with them impacted your decision to be a veterinarian uh, and maybe what type of veterinarian? 
Yeah, so it definitely reassured me that this is the path I want to be on. Like, I want to help animals. But it's also made it a little more difficult because going into college, I was like, I either want to work with dogs and cats or growing up by the beach, I always thought it would be amazing to work with marine animals. And now they're kind of tearing me in three different directions now because I love being around them.